Hello, and welcome back to Zen Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Explorer, we're going to take a look at sprites. Now, we've explored sprites before, but perhaps from a kind of a grown-up way, and uh, grown-ups will still get a, a lot out of this anyway, but uh, now we're going to come at it from how do kids see sprites. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we will uh, we'll have a look. So there's two types of sprites um, and let's go to the code page here and under features is interactive animation. This is what a sprite looks like right here. There it is. It's animating and we're going to make this one kind of rewind it just played but now it rewinds and comes back and there it is paused and then it's going to loop and so uh, with zim we can control sprites uh, very nicely um, things like that we can easily change the speed of it we can make it loop or whatever we want to do and here are is a sprite sheet so this is what a sprite sheet looks like thanks antonio uh, one of the sheridan animators and sheridan certainly knows about sprites and animation it's one of the leading colleges in the world for animation if not the leading college in the world and that's where i teach uh, dr abstract i teach interactive media there so i'm interested in interactive animations where people turn their animations interactive so they can do things with them and a prime example of that would be like a game, for instance. Um, so here's a sprite that is walking around and when you press it shoots and it changes speed. And we'll come back to that. I'll show you that later. Uh, but the sprite sheet for this is packed in there in a place called Texture Packer uh, right here. And that means you have to have data with it and you have to go through the texture packing process to get that data. It's a little more complicated. There are also sprites that are just equally spaced grids of rows and columns. And I'm going to show you one of those now so that, you know, it's very easy for kids to use as well. And we're going to go to the gold bars here. So along the top, if we hit gold bars, it takes us down to where we have kids and school. I'm going to go in from kids because sprites have been popular in block-based coding like um, Scratch, for instance. And then when they come in to code in real life, they don't want to go to somewhere like Phaser. Phaser's got sprites too, but Phaser's quite complicated for kids to learn. Zim is an amazing place to come and learn um, how to do code. Uh, we have all of this stuff right here that has different levels. So here are levels and there we are doing a nice easy animation in this level. You can see the code behind it or the samples get more info which goes into more detail with the code where code's more like just the steps to do. Okay and so this is Zim Kids. Here's all sorts of lessons. Each of these has three different parts to it going through the basics of coding. And then we've got the bugs, which are integrated. You get to play with little bugs. We even do physics. Uh, so um, it would be great if, uh, if you're a teacher of code to come in and make sure you really take a close look at what we're doing here in Zim. And one of the things that we have are sprites. So uh, let's see what those sprites look like. If you're a teacher, check this out right there. Okay, so we're going to go into Slate right here. Slate is where we can make scenes. And it's much like the Zim Editor. If you've used Zim before and seen the editor, uh, as a matter of fact, the Zim Editor was based on our work that we did here on the, um, the Kids Editor Slate. One difference is in the Zim Editor, we don't have these assets listed nice and easily for us here. Uh, we can use them, but there are, we've got a bunch of kids assets. So you know, let's show you. We're going to do a butterfly of a sprite and we'll find a nice picture of some flowers. So I, I'm going to select that as a background. Those are some backings. And then under nature over here, um, somewhere in nature, we have a butterfly. It's probably alphabetical. There's a monkey sprite four by four. Okay, so now let's see, alphabetical butterfly, A, B, C, oh, there it is right there. So we select butterfly and it's a 10 by four sprite, which means it's like a bunch of little pictures of a butterfly, 10 of them going across and four of them going down. And that's what we're going to use. So we hit save. 
That takes us back here, and now we have our flowers coming in and our butterfly. So if we bring in the backing, uh, new pick, and the name of the backing is flowers right here, flower 02, and we can dot center that on the stage and save. So there's our pick. It doesn't quite fit in there. Uh, so we do have a scale two, dot scale two. If we don't put anything, it will scale it to the stage and fill the stage. So that's a default scale when you don't put anything there, which is handy. So if I save this up now, it just fit on the stage like so. We have different stage sizes uh, up here that you can choose or different arrangements and stuff. So um, anyway, that's a way to get it to fit on any of those. Now let's add the sprite. New sprite. And it is called butterfly right here. And it had 10, what was it? 10 by four or is it 10 by six? I uh, can't remember for sure. So uh, where was that under nature? 10 by four. So 10 by 4. So that was 10 columns going across and 4. If we wanted to see it, you could put it in a sprite right there. Should we do that just quickly before we do this? Put butterfly there instead and comment it out. So this is what the butterfly looks like, except we would want it to fit to the stage, and that's 100%. And so now we've made sure that it fits on the stage. You see how that scaled it to the stage 100% of the width right there so it made it as big as the stage uh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and one two three four this butterfly is actually made up of different um, animations in a sense there's animating looking to the left there's animating looking to the right there's a pause sort of animation and we do have an example on this thing called the motion controller where we make use of those animation states to make the butterfly fly to the right, to make the butterfly fly to the left, and then even make the butterfly just pause and stop there. So, or not pause exactly, but just flutter straight. <laughs> now, we're not going to worry about that in our explore here today, and I don't think the kids will necessarily notice. It'll just look like it's flying back and forth. Okay. So uh, that's what the butterfly looks like. And now we go back here to what we had before, which is our flowers. We're going to bring in our sprite, 10 by 4. We can center it. One thing to watch out for is a sprite is always um, has its registration point in the top left corner. That means if we make this follow the mouse, the top left corner of the butterfly will follow the mouse. It might be better if we center that registration point. We have a nice easy way to do that with center reg like that. So that will center the butterfly and we might see it there. There it is, but it's not running. It's like, oh, there's a little butterfly right there in the center, but not running. So we need to dot run the butterfly. That will run it once and then it stopped. So in here, we can make it run multiple times. So we can say loop colon true, or however many times we want. It's a little fast. So in here as well, we can go time colon true. Oh, not true. <laughs> yes, there is time. We'll make it two seconds. So that's a time of how many seconds do we want to run the animation. By default, it's one second, and that's pretty fast. Oh, there. Shall we make it a bit bigger so we can see it? Dot ska for scale, 1.5. Ah, there we go. Now we have a butterfly that is flapping. And you see there's the left flap and the right flap. I guess maybe it's only got left flap and right flap. <laughs> but it doesn't look too bad like that. It's just kind of changes direction a little bit. But it would be nice if we could make it move, wouldn't you say? So one way to do that is dot drag it. And now we can pick up, oh, if we can pick up that butterfly, we can pick up that butterfly and drag it about. All right, if we wanted to pick it up easier, oh, you don't need to know this. We could expand it in that way. It, it, the, what's happening is it doesn't pick up where the, the butterfly isn't, so you have to make sure that you actually pick the picture of it. 
Um, but there's a way to expand. It's called dot expand like this. And then it will be easier to pick up the butterfly because that made a big sort of box that's all interactive around it. See my finger? Whoop, like that. Even that part, it's been expanded. Easier to get for mobile fingers. But anyway, we don't need to do <laughs> that right now. Nor do I even want to drag it. Um, we could animate it. So that's another thing we could do. Just right on here, we could say dot animate and animate it along. Uh, we could wiggle it and make it just sort of fly around randomly with a wiggle. And so that's another thing we could do to it. But what I'm going to do is add it to a motion controller so that it can follow where I press or where my mouse is or a keyboard um, arrow button or a gamepad. So if we had a, a joystick, a gamepad, a game controller, we could control it with the joystick just as easily as, as what we're going to see here. So let's give it a name, uh, const butterfly is equal to this. That's in that putting it in a variable. We'll make a new motion controller and add the butterfly. So by default, it's whatever you click on. The only small snag here is uh, also by default, when you do a motion controller, say we had a button here and we had this motion controller. And if I click the button, I don't want the butterfly to go towards the button. So by default, we say, if you've clicked on something that's on the stage here, we don't count that as a click. <laughs> so if we didn't have a picture, here's what it looks like without the picture, then we can just press on the stage and away it goes. <laughs> All right, but when we do have the picture, we're pressing on the picture and it doesn't, it doesn't count as a, as a press. So there's a few ways around that. One is you can say, pretend that the picture has no mouse like that. All right, so we say no mouse. That means the picture will ignore the mouse and that works. But, you know, telling kids that is a little bit awkward. And if you're a kid, you're kind of going, oh, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> um, so that's one way to get around the pressing. And it's really only a pressing issue, as in when we press down. Uh, the other way is built right into the motion controller. We can add the picture to the mouse down includes. But anyway, we, let's ignore that because I don't even want to control it when I press down. I want to control it copy. We didn't have that saved, by the way. That's why it's still pressed down there. We want to um, go to something called mouse move. There we go. Now watch what happens now. So I don't have to do the no mouse on here. I've just changed it to mouse move and watch. Oh, the butterfly follows the mouse. And do you see how the butterfly goes to where my cursor is like that? If we didn't center reg, so if we didn't put the registration point of the butterfly in the middle, now the butterfly kind of goes to the right hand side and underneath my cursor. Okay, because that's the top left corner of where the sprite is. Uh, you can tell where things are by going dot out line, like so. Okay, that's what the sprite looks like. And so where that little round circle is, that's where it's putting the, the that's where it's putting the sprite to my mouse. Okay. So where were we? Yay, we have a sprite with the motion controller. Wonderful. Oh <laughs> wait, uh, back to center edge. Another way to do that, by the way, is to say dot reg center like that. You can also do that, but the faster way for when you're centering it is dot center reg. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, that actually might be of interest to you. Let's just go back to that one. If you didn't, if you wanted the middle of it to be centered, but you wanted it at the bottom, Okay, watch what happens. Now the sprite is like it's on top of my cursor. And sometimes when you're moving things, it, it makes a difference. Or say you were wanting to flip a sprite. That, this makes a difference with flipping a sprite too sometimes. Depending on what shape the sprite is, when you flip it to go in an other direction, you might want the registration point to be right in the middle, or maybe you don't. Maybe you want it over on the edge. And so the reg right here will help you determine what that, um, how that will flip. Anyway, we want it center regged, and so that's fine. I think we're good. 
there is, I wanted to show you a zap right here. And in there is a sprite. Let's see. Uh, do you see the butterfly somewhere? Motion controller and emitter. That's probably it right there. Oh, no, that's showing that the emitter can follow the motion controller. Okay, good. Um, spaceman using Zim Kids assets. No, animate. Butterfly from Sprite. There it is right there. Butterfly Sprite from Kids assets. So those things that we just looked at are called zaps, and they actually came from the Zim editor. And remember, the editor is a little bit different. So if I look at the code for that down in... Oh, but let me just show you this. Okay, look. When the sprite is close, it's big. When it's far away, it's small and goes more slowly. You see how it takes a while to fly across the, the sky there. But when it's close, it can fly across really quickly. Because that's how it works. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? So this was done in part kind of for adults as well and just showing you that we can do that. And if we take a look at the code behind that, we note that we have to bring in, we have to load assets, the butterfly, from the path that we had there. Okay, and when they're complete, then we made a sprite from that picture. So we actually don't need the picture anymore. We, we The new pick, we can just say butterfly.png, but uh, that is just showing that that's where we got it from the assets. I mean, they're built in kind of right into here for the Zim kids. And then down below, if you're interested in that, is what we were doing to change the scale of the, um, of the butterfly. We set up a proportion based on the height of the stage. That's how much we're going to change the scale from half as big to two. And then we convert that proportion based on the Y of the butterfly to change its scale. And the speed is uh, converted, the, the motion controller speed is, is converted with this proportion. So um, yeah, from zero at the top to height at the bottom, we're changing it from two to eight. So it goes faster when it's closer to you at the bottom and it goes slower when it's up high. This, by the way, this system is built into Zim Animate. So if we were going to animate the butterfly here, there's actually settings called zoom and speed that are uh, that help you animate something. This was all put in place in Zim Neo. So in Zim Neo, oh, okay, hang on, why don't I show you? So we go back out to kids because we're we're pretty well done here on the. Um, the kids side but isn't that neat and we see sprites in there like a monkey and stuff so anyway we're done with the kids side let's pop on out to zim and back under the examples well yeah okay under collections it's the zim neo collection here where we put that in place so that's when we started animating along paths and we put them in what's called the extra. So this is a path right here that we're animating along. And these are extra things that we can add as we animate along the path. One of those things is you see it gets bigger when it's closer. And then it gets smaller when it's farther away and slower. That slower and then faster, 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 then slower and then faster, faster, faster as it comes towards us. And we're also showing it go through layers. That's why it's changing layers as it goes as well. All of that is built right in. Zoom, level, or layers are level, speed, and fade. Ah, that was another thing we were doing. I didn't notice. We are fading it out as it goes farther away. We sort of fade it. Okay. And if we didn't see the path, then that's, that's what it looks like. It kind of fades out as it gets farther away. It's brighter as it gets closer. And that's all built in to Zim animation. Neat, huh? Okay, so sprites. Yeah, there's all sorts of sprites in here. This this is a little sprite guy. And by the way, if you come out and take a look on the Zim website, so that's back here, and scroll down to right here, we're comparing ourselves to Pixie.js and to phaser.js and to some degree create.js which is what this is built on 
and when we do we're always shorter and most of those actually are comparisons of sprites the way we work with sprites is much more um, efficient or simple uh, easier easier to do okay one more thing though before we leave this zim explore and that is we told you we would go back and take a look at our code page past where our template is that's that's how you start zim and then right here under features is interactive animation and let's go down and check out this example right here so this is antonio's artwork thanks antonio he's an animator at sheridan and indeed, Sheridan is you know, well known for animations, and that's where I teach in interactive media. So uh, you're welcome to come take interactive media with us if you want. And let me shoot. All right, so if I slow down, it slows down. If I go to the right, it speeds up. And the way that we've done this, let's add some music. Oh, sneaking music. So the way that we've done this is the backing is in a scroller and so it has parallax where the very far away world or the, the backing there is going slowly and the ones up front are going fast. We put them in scrollers and those will repeat. We also put um, the sprite in what's called a dynamo and a dynamo is a sprite that can change speed. So there it is going fast, beep, 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 and slow. Okay, so we can change speed. Then we put both, all of the backings, all of those scrollers and the dynamo, we put them into an accelerator. And the accelerator, if you just change the speed of the accelerator, it will change the speed of all of the things that are inside it. And we control the speed of the accelerator with the motion controller. So this would be just as easy to control if we use keyboards or a joystick or a mouse press, but here we've got it just following the mouse like that. Isn't that amazing? So that is, uh, that's animation in Zim using sprites. So there's a zip file here that has all of those. There's also a video that goes through and explains it all as well as a medium article and what interactive animation is. And then there's more information about Sheridan Interactive Media as well, if you're interested. Uh, you've got the Zim Kids there to help, help kids go from sprites in Scratch to sprites in actual JavaScript in a nice, easy way. I am Dr. Abstract. This has been a Zim Explore. Come on in and visit us uh, here if we go to the top at Discord or our forum right here if you have any questions. If you are a teacher, we have a teach topic there in the forum. You're welcome to get a hold of us. All right. Have a great day or night. Ciao.